All right, I think we're on our fifth or sixth video on this 2015 Cadillac Escalade Platinum. And I've taken you all the way from the very beginning steps of showing you deep vacuum, throwing two vacuum pumps on it, the difference between the micron level as it went down by adding the second vacuum pump did make a difference. But you gotta also remember another thing about vacuum. The farther you get down in vacuum, the harder it is to lower the vacuum, the more energy and time it takes to achieve that lower vacuum. It's not instantaneous. Like when you first hook up a vacuum pump and you have that great change, it's, um, what's that word? It's not linear. It's uh, like logarithmic or uh, exponentially, or exponentially gets slower. And the way I could describe vacuum is to get to 29 inches of mercury vacuum is like lifting a feather, pedal, a feather pillow over your head. This is something I've heard as a terminology and it's true. The energy required to get to 29 inches of mercury vacuum is lifting a feather pil uh, pillow over your head. The energy required to get to 29.92 inches or get down to below 500 or 200 microns is like lifting a refrigerator over your head and then climbing up the Statue of Liberty steps all the way up to the flame with the refrigerator over your head. That's how much energy it takes to get to that low vacuum. That's why the guys who use the vacuum pumps and they have analog gauges and go, oh yeah, I hit 29. 29 means nothing. 29 is like being in a marathon that's 24, 26 miles long. And uh, shit, I forgot what the marathon was and I even ran two of them. Um, and but you only run one block that's what 29 inches of mercury is all right guys uh let's get on to the pressure zone one other thing so here's an example i have hot blowing heat that's coming out at about 180 90 degrees and this hot heat is blowing this way and it's blowing over the exhaust manifolds and the exhaust manifolds are in direct line of sight they're heating up my gauges really hot even though the line is cold the plastic that my thermocouples are going to is really hot. So it actually messes up my gauge readings because I'm getting convection heat blowing over hot air over my sensors. Plus I'm getting radiant heat directly contacting my sensors and just roasting the plastic on there. You either move it somewhere else if you can, or you have to wrap it in an insulator when you want to do really exact test. You don't just hook up sensors and pressures uh, things everywhere. If you have radiant heat, if you have convection heat going over your sensors that are transducer coupling type thermistors, you have to protect them against convection heat, that blowing hot air, plus the radiant heat of hot items. So you would wrap an insulation and then you would put a reflective insulation. See, that's why this is aluminum like this and it's reflective. That's to reflect the radiant heat. And then you would put a reflective around your thermal barrier insulation around your test tools. Now that's what you would do when you're gonna do really precise test measurements. You see these guys, they go, oh yeah, I tested and they put it, publish it in magazines and on forums and stuff like that. And I'll even say this myself, unless it's wrapped and insulated both from convection and from radiant heat, you will get messed up readings. And I have shown that in videos before. Now let's get to the uh, lap top not the laptop the iPad in here let's see what we've been doing so uh, here's our pressures you can see we're sitting in the bright Sun it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit outside but this vehicle has been sitting all morning in the bright Sun we're into I think 145 we're almost 1 p.m. Oh, 112 1252 p.m. so it's almost 1 p.m. we're in the strong heat of the day right now this is the strongest Sun that it will basically be right now and this vehicle is sitting in the sun and we have a uh, our superheated at 7.6 degrees our subcooling 21 degrees I got to show you where I'm taking these measurements at you have seen my superheat is being taken from the thermistor that is clamped on at the evaporator leaving not the second evaporator you notice there's two evaporators on this vehicle and I'm taking the temperature before the second evaporator on the pipe right out of the evaporator coming out of the dash. That's where I'm taking the superheat at. Uh, the subcooling, I'm taking the subcooling out of the condenser 
before the line hits the block and it splits to two liquid lines going to the rear and going to the front. Remember that. And I have no problem with radiant heat, well, radiant heat or um, convection. I don't have a problem on this sensor, but I do have a problem on this sensor with both radiant and convection heat. Getting up to, oh, for, hey, what happened to my air side? Link tools. Oh, I lost my tools. Hey, where's my tools? All right, I just lost. It's still there. Oh, that, that's a, sh that's a bummer. That really blows my uh, thing. Okay, let's link these back. Let's get just back out of here. Let's link up again. Link, okay, there we go. We're hooked up. Let's see what our air said. So we're at, at idle, sitting in the sun, we're at 45.2 degrees. That's the front ducts. There's the rear too. Remember there's rears back there. You see up at the top, those blowers? You have rear two to take. You have to record those too. And let me data log this for the customer. So you gotta, you gotta wait a second. Okay, so now it's starting right there. So now this goes to the customer's work order. Now let's take and take the superheat coming out of the rear evaporator and let's see how much superheat we pick up by absorption. Now see, we're not, this ground below us, this car has been sitting here so the sun has not been hitting the pavement before us, the blacktop, heating it up. And the vehicle hasn't been running long so the exhaust is not that on. But let's see how much superheat we pick up from the rear, from the evaporator through the line by the time it gets all the way up here in the front. So we're gonna look at superheat. I'm gonna grab that clamp where the temperature coming out of the dash, out of the evaporator is 39.9 degrees, but it's actually colder because this is a false temperature because my sensor is having 190 plus degree air blowing over it from the radiator and the air going over the exhaust manifold and blowing over my sensor. So that's a little bit warmer than it actually is. And I'm in direct line sight of the hot exhaust manifold radiating heat right to my sensor. So the only way I could get a true temperature is wrapping insulation around it and then putting a reflective insulator to reflect IR so radiant heat doesn't heat up the insulation that I just wrapped on there. This is why I always see these guys doing all these tests, especially when they're like a board of very special people who are supposed to be know what they're doing and they do some collective collaboration and they come up with a, uh, a, a theory, a hypothesis. Uh, basically it's a shit show, a kangaroo court, and they try to present it to a group of people and they don't understand what they even got or how to take the measurements. And they use some rinky dinky ass tools to take their measurements with. Um, but I won't go down and name names on that one, but it was really embarrassing when I showed up to a, uh, a let's say a gathering of mines, what were not much of knowing what they were doing, but it's okay, they're automotive guys. They're not supposed to know. Let's see. I'm sorry. Keep an eye on that superheat. Keep an eye on that temperature, 40 degrees, 6.9 superheat. Let me grow, I'm gonna grab right here. Do you see where I'm grabbing? And that's the closest I could get. Right out of the evaporator, right out of the expansion valve. Do you see the expansion valve down there? I, I, I don't, the front office. Um, so right there, that's the evaporator. And that's where I'm trying to grab my temperature. And that's a false temperature, because remember, I explained radiant and I explained convention heat. And these are things that you learned in when you were taking automotive engineering and you got into the cl uh, classes about heat and energy. Uh, this is all basic stuff. 101, your first semester. But remember, there's no formal education that's required in the automotive industry, so that was lacking. So let's get it back over here. Let me see if I could find right where the lines come out of the evaporator. There we go. Right there. You see 
see that water forming on them? Let me back up. There's the exhaust. See that nice hot exhaust that'll be right there, sitting right above by, here's your black rubber hoses. Let's look up here. See where my hands are? See how wet that is? But you see this, this nice hot exhaust muffler right here? Just baking away when you're in stop and grow Catholic, adding heat. So let me get right here. Let's see how close I could get. Get away from the muffler if I can. Get a little higher. Okay, right there. Boom. Okay, right there. This is right out of the evaporator coming from the rear. So let's see what our evaporator temperature, our line temperature, and our superheat at this point. Then we're gonna take this all the way to the front of the car and see what it is up there. Now, be mind, this is not a 100 degree day. The engine hasn't been running, so it's not really hot. Uh, and we're not on top of a hot black top. So this is about 58, 65 degrees. This has been in the shade. Underneath the car has been, so there's not hot radiating black top, radiating heat up. And we don't have a really hot exhaust and a really hot catalytic converter adding heat to that line. But let's take a look at this. Let's get back here. Let's see if we could do this without dropping it. Look at our superheat on the rear evap. 15, 13. That's taken right out of the evaporator. Look at the temperature. Instead of 39 degrees, it's 46 degrees. That's at this point right here. Now let me grab that same sensor. The sensor, remember the sensor is right about here. Right above, right above the exhaust muffler is right here. My sensor is right here. Now I'm gonna take that sensor off. I'm gonna move it along the line and go all the way to the front where it comes to the engine. So let's go grab that and move it and take a look at 17 degrees superheat, 49, 50 degrees line temperature. Let's get back down here and I laid in that water. My back is all wet now. All right, let's grab that. So now we're coming off there. Let's move to the front. Now, see that line coming from the rear? See that one that comes up and then it bends over and comes back down? That's from the rear. So let me get right there. So now we're grabbing the rear line, rear evaporator. Let's focus. Now look at our temperature, 66 degrees. 33 superheat. Did you see the superheat go up? Did you see that temperature go up? That is because the refrigerant that is coming out of the evaporator, and there might be a little, you know, sometimes there's a little bit left refrigerant that hasn't, well, it is, it's going into superheat because it was, what was it back here, 15 or 17 or something like that? It's flashed off. But as that goes along that aluminum line, that's next to the exhaust under here and the catalytic converter and the heat that is rising up, filling underneath the frame and making it over to the line, it's adding and picking up heat in that section line. So the superheat is going off. More of the refrigerant is flashing up and picking up energy. It's picking up energy What if this was hot black top and that was a hot exhaust in stop and go traffic, it would be picking up that heat, adding a heat load on your compressor, adding a heat load to your condenser condenser to reject and remember if you have some of these cheap aftermarket condensers there's no wiggle room for error and you don't need that so that is the placement right there the difference between the back and the front um greg macchiallo and i'm sorry i butchered his name got it uh hvac service LLC. I'm always telling you guys to watch his video. He makes excellent videos on superheat and subcooling. He's made videos that combine the both topics together and he's made videos that just dwell on one topic alone trying to explain it really good and he's done several videos. Same with Brian Orb's videos from HVAC School. That's another one. He's did some very precise dedicated videos just on the topic and so has Ty Bremerman uh, on his YouTube channel 
love to HVAC. I think it's a L O V and then the number two and then HVAC on his uh, YouTube channel. And he's done some really precise videos on superheat and subcooling and explaining how the refrigerant goes through the evaporator, how the expansion valve modulates and controls and adjusts the refrigerant. If you watch all three, and there's a fourth, uh, HVAC Mentor, I think it was, he made some excellent videos too. I forgot to mention him. If you watch at least three of those guys' videos repeatedly, all about the same talk, I know you might get bored, but for those of you guys who really want to get better and understand refrigerant down to the molecular level, like my dad, he taught me, he says, you have to picture yourself as a single molecule of refrigerant and what state, what phase change are you in as you're flowing through the hoses and you're going through evaporators, condensers, expansion valves, and compressors. Explain to me in what phase you are in, what temperature and pressure you're in, as I, he was giving me ambient days and sun load and stuff like that. My father made me do that as a child. And if you think this way, and if you can understand refrigerant traveling in the lines and see it in your heads, just like if you had x-ray vision and you can see through the metal and you can see in what state of transition the refrigerant is, you have to get your understanding to that level. All right, guys, uh, refrigeration guys are really good at that. Uh, they step it up one notch. The more correct way is they use uh, saturation. And my dad mastered that. He tried to get that to me. And I, I still will admit to this day, I don't have saturation down in my head like uh, Oh, he is, there's another person, Holden. Holden is his last name. He makes really good. Now, he's more of a refrigeration guy and heavy industrial. He is great. You got to watch his channels too. All right, guys. I'll see you later.